What is a gadget? A gadget is something that you can pick up in your hands that gives you some kind of capability you didn't have before. Something either mechanical or electronic, and also personal. You yourself have a relationship with it. Gadgets these days define us. Gadgets make life better. They make you into a bigger, better version of yourself in a way that seems almost like magic. Gadgets are more than just the coolest things you can give a guy. Some of them have actually changed the course of history. We're counting down Popular Mechanics Magazine's list of the most world-changing gadgets of all time. Let's start with number 101. Invented to keep moisture out of ammo cases during World War II, duct tape made history and changed the world. In one year, a single manufacturer sold enough duct tape to wrap the earth 20 times. Cotton mesh forms its backbone, making it strong enough to lift a car, yet supple enough to tear it with your bare hands. All of us have used duct tape to fix something that probably should have been fixed the right way, but you know, we're in a hurry. Um, I've certainly driven around with a car with an entire window uh, constructed out of duct tape. It's not just for half-assed handymen. Duct tape left its mark on American history. On April 13, 1970, an explosion crippled Apollo 13, exposing the three-man crew to potentially lethal levels of CO2 gas. Uh, here's the way that Dozens of NASA's greatest minds, billions of dollars in space-age technology at their disposal. The solution was clear. It would take duct tape to save the crew. And when we went down the storage list, we found duct tape. And as soon as we knew we had duct tape, we knew that we had what we needed. Ed Smiley's team devised a filter using plastic bags, cardboard, and rubber tubing, sealing the whole thing with duct tape. That wasn't rocket science, it was mechanical engineering. The astronauts gathered up all the materials and got to work. It took the crew about 30 minutes to build this configuration. Minutes later, CO2 levels returned to normal. And in two days, the crew returned safely to Earth. So, how does something as impactful as duct tape land at number 101? Here's how the list was created by the experts at Popular Mechanics, the go-to magazine for technology. When assembling our list, the editors of Popular Mechanics worked with some of the smartest technology experts in the country to come up with the real best of the best. Some of the people on our list were Buzz Aldrin, the astronaut who's on our board of advisors, Tim Wu, the author and technology expert, David Pogue from the New York Times. These are all people who live and work with cutting edge technology on a daily basis. Over 20 panelists got together to declare their picks for the world's greatest gadgets. The results were tabulated and now revealed as the definitive list of 101 gadgets that changed the world. Now, back to the countdown with gadget number 100. It transformed a pastime into a high-intensity sport. The fiberglass fishing rod. In the 1950s, there was an embargo on Chinese bamboo, so fishing rod manufacturers had to come up with something different, fiberglass. And in the end, it turned out to be a far superior material. Number 99. Legend says the first one was made for King Louis XV. The stapler. Hundreds of years later, they're so coveted that they're the fourth most pilfered office supply after pens and pencils, paper products, and paper clips. Number 98. Seeks out dust bunnies with technology that's also used to detect landmines. The Roomba, a robotic vacuum cleaner. For people who grew up on the Jetsons like I did, we thought we'd have humanoid, multi-purpose robots taking care of our every need by now. But in fact, what the Roomba shows is it will have lots of single-purpose robots that are customized for individual tasks. Number 97. From vaccines to fire extinguishers to bug repellents, they're all in the aerosol can. In fact, 
13 billion of them are produced every year. Pressing the nozzle opens up a tube, releasing pressurized liquid in the form of a fine spray. A spring reseals the can when the nozzle is released. So how did it change history? The classic example would be the, the bug bombs that they started using during World War II. In the Pacific theater, the mosquito was as big an enemy as Hirohito. Malaria plagued Pacific troops. But in the early 1940s, mosquito prevention was primitive. Insecticide was dispensed with simple hand pumps. Then, American ingenuity came to the rescue, introducing the first aerosol can, the bug bomb. It's a heavy thing, it's very solid metal. It was originally a carbon dioxide container and they put a uh, valve on the end that was from a stove burner and it just contained pyrethrum, sesame oil and freon and then this valve was opened up and you let out as much as you wanted and kill all the mosquitoes there. The bug bomb's impact was immediate. Malaria infections decreased dramatically. Incredibly, 50 million bug bombs were manufactured by the end of the war. This device is often credited with a large part of our victory in the Pacific Theater. Gadget number 96 saved limbs rather than lives. The quick release ski binding. It reduced below the knee ski injuries by a staggering 90%. Number 95, a rocket scientist dreamed up this water gun on steroids. The Super Soaker. Gotcha. More than a quarter billion Super Soakers have been sold since its introduction in the 80s. So the next time your pool party or wet t-shirt contest is a big hit, thank a rocket scientist. Number 94 helped cure a dreaded disease. The blender. Amazingly, Dr. Jonas Salk used a blender and monkey kidney tissue to whip up the first polio vaccine back in 1952. We assume he washed it before celebrating his accomplishment with a margarita. Number 93, gadgets aren't just for the guys. In 1893, the bra made what had long been down and apart, now up and together. The bra is the over-the-shoulder boulder holder. As a female, I feel I don't need to say much more. Number 92. The original was made of steel and weighed almost 20 pounds. The cooler. How's this for snappy branding? The earliest cooler was named the portable ice chest for storing foods and the like. From chilled beers to life-saving transplant organs, Americans have entrusted their most precious cargo to the cooler for almost 60 years. Number 91 changed how we watch television the digital video recorder. Launched in 1999, the DVR gave us the power to select when and what we wanted to see most. Number 90, for almost 80 years, it's been the worldwide symbol of cool. The Zippo, the world's most iconic lighter. One of the great things about the Zippo lighter is that you can actually see the wheels turning that like clinging action, like how people kind of make that one movement and they can actually like make flames appear. But why was the Zippo unique? It's the metal chimney that protects the wick from the wind, but allows just enough oxygen in through a series of holes so the flame stays lit. Since its introduction, Zippo has produced over 400 million lighters. In my mind, the Zippo lighter is always associated with the military. It was that one personal object that soldiers carried with them. When I was in the Army, the Zippo was always in my pocket because I had a pack of cigarettes over here and a Zippo lighter. Jerry Weintraub began his showbiz career in the 1960s, producing Frank Sinatra's concert tours. Frank smoked, and he always had a Zippo. He always used a Zippo, and he, he really enjoyed it. Among the many movies Weintraub has produced were Oceans 11, 12, and 13. I used them in the Oceans movie, and that was like an homage to Frank. We used it as a gadget 
to change the dice and make a seven or an 11 come up. And there was no better symbol to make a seven or 11, which makes you a winner, come up than a Zippo lighter. Because in my day, when you had a Zippo, you were a winner. We're counting down 101 gadgets that changed the world. But in a modern world chock full of technical wonders, how did popular mechanics rank one gadget higher than another? Anytime you do a list like this, of course you're going to have disagreements about, you know, why was this ranked 41 and that was ranked 45. But the disagreements really are part of the fun. So how do you decide whether a fishing pole is better than a DVR? Actually, there was a lot of debate back and forth, but when we all put our heads together, it seemed pretty clear. In every field, we can find technologies that once you look back and you imagine life without them, you realize how important they've become. 20 plus experts voted and argued on the top 101 gadgets, but no geeks were injured in the making of the ultimate gizmo list. Back to the countdown with gadget number 89. Its design is downright slick. Teflon. It doesn't just keep eggs from sticking to the pan. The world's most slippery substance was also woven into spacesuits to protect astronauts from scrapes. Gadget number 88 proves that size doesn't matter. The flash drive. Introduced a decade ago, the largest can hold over 175,000 times more data than the old three and a half inch floppy disk. The flash drive preserves your data. It's super fast. It doesn't have any moving parts. It lasts a long time. It uses no power. It makes no noise. You know, the capacity to every single person to have the kind of storage that MIT only or IBM had in the 1970s is unbelievable. The secret to the flash drive's innovation is the flash memory chip. Because it has no moving parts, it's less susceptible to damage, unlike hard disk drives that are easily damaged by shock. It's a symbol of simple convenience, but it's also been used as a potent weapon in espionage. In the summer of 2010, a flash drive armed with a computer virus called Stuxnet, slowed Iran's nuclear ambitions to a crawl. Stuxnet virus was a very sophisticated little virus, but apparently was actually targeted only at one very specific computer system at a nuclear facility in Iran. Was it the US or maybe even Israel? Nobody's saying. But because of the flash drive, Iranian President Ahmadinejad suffered a major setback. You can really think about these thumb drives, these USB drives, as being analogous to precision-guided munitions, like a missile. Number 87 forever changed the way products were marketed. The Ginsu knife. Without it, the world might have missed out on, but wait, there's more! It accomplished amazing feats, like cutting through a metal can and still slicing a tomato. Why do that? Nobody really knows. But $50 million in sales later, operators are still standing by. Number 86 restores something to 8 million Americans that most of us take for granted. The hearing aid. The earliest models were fashioned from cumbersome horns, seashells, or trumpets. But in 1952, the transistor made the modern hearing aid possible. Without gadget number 85, Mount Everest would have been insurmountable. Sunglasses. The best-selling brand? Ray-Bans. When Tom Cruise wore a pair of aviators in the movie Top Gun, sales leaped to 1.5 million units. Number 84 may be the most eye-opening gadget on the planet. The automatic drip coffee maker. Introduced in 1972, it eliminated re-brewing, the percolator's downfall, and created better tasting Joe. Number 83 is often called the greatest thing since sliced bread. The electric toaster. This gadget really took off in the 1920s when home-baked bread gave way to the pre-sliced loaf. It's America's favorite baked good, and 75 million of us eat it every day. Before number 82 came along, you needed a candle to see in the dark. The flashlight. Introduced in 1898, it could light your way without burning down your house and made darkness less foreboding. 
The flashlight went hand in hand with the dry cell battery. You close your eyes and you think of a flashlight and you think of the mag light. You know, they almost become, you can almost use the name of the brand instead of the object itself. It's sturdy, it's very heavy in your hand, it's really reliable. Introduced in 1979 and made in the good old US of A, the mag light was one of the first flashlights to be crafted from anodized aluminum. This durable, reliable gadget quickly became a favorite with police and firemen and is credited with saving countless lives. September 11, 2001. Gary Fishbone was trapped in Seven World Trade Center as the North Tower came crashing down. And one of the security personnel, a very large fella, uh, yelled out, everybody be quiet, does anybody know the way out? I did. Fishbone pulled out his almost seven inch long mini mag light flashlight. I could shine it maybe this far off the wall. If I went this far, you couldn't see the light. But with that, I was able to get a sense of where the wall was. Fishbone used the flashlight's nearly 3,000 candle power output to lead 40 others through the smoke-filled corridors. We ultimately found the pathways to go out the backside of Seven World Trade Center. Having a flashlight was night and day. Number 81 was invented in Japan to spray pesticides. The leaf blower. They can generate air speeds of over 270 miles per hour and enough noise to make ear protection mandatory. 20 plus California cities have banned them, but look out, they could be coming to a park near you. Talk about versatile gadgets. Now there's leaf blower hockey. Try that with a rig. Number 80 gave fishermen one less excuse for the big one that got away. The spin cast fishing reel. Introduced in 1949, this innovation eliminated the tangles that had plagued previous designs. The result? Hassle-free fishing at last. Number 79 combines a knife, corkscrew, and scissors into one gadget. The Swiss Army Knife. In the 1890s, Swiss inventor Carl Elsner was upset that Swiss soldiers were walking around with German-made knives, so he developed the Swiss Army knife. Since then, the Swiss have been involved in exactly zero wars, making the corkscrew the most important tool in it. And it's still evolving. A new model includes a laser pointer, a 32-gig flash drive, and of course, a pair of scissors. Number 78. The guy who invented the can in 1810 forgot one thing a can opener. It wasn't until 1858 that Ezra Warner patented the first model and helped usher in a whole new way to eat. The funny thing about the can opener is it was invented after the can, but for years, and they wanted to get to the sweet goodness inside that can, they needed a chisel and a hammer. I often joke that it released us from the tyranny of fresh food. Stuff could sit on your shelf for a year now or more, and it was all made possible by the can opener. Before the can opener, soldiers in the field opened food cans with knives or bayonets. World War II brought a handy new gadget called the P-38 can opener. The 38 means it takes 38 reciprocal motions up and down all the way around the lid of the can to open a sea ration can. During the 1942 Battle of El Alamein in the deserts of North Africa, America supplied ample sea rations and plenty of P-38 can openers to keep Allied forces in the fight. By contrast, Axis forces were undersupplied. It was a critical factor in their catastrophic defeat. The Allied victory at El Alamein is one of the three turning points of the war. Our allies depended on cans and the can opener to keep up the fight. Gadget number 77 helped usher in the transition to digital television. The DVD player. What paved the way for the DVD was the huge success of the CD audio format. So the public already understood digital storage and they were ready for a medium that did the same thing for movies. Introduced stateside in 1997, 131 million units leapt off the shelves in the first 10 years signaling the death knell for the popular VHS cassette. 
Number 76. 66,000 American loggers owe their livelihoods to this next gadget. The chainsaw. The chainsaw was developed by a surgeon who needed a better way to open up skulls for surgery. It was later adapted for cutting down trees. Of course, either way, if it's not done properly, it's pretty dangerous. Dangerous is right. This helpful gadget is also treacherous. Chainsaws cause 28,000 injuries a year at a medical cost of almost $350 million. The average chainsaw injury requires 110 stitches, but even with the risk, you can't debate its usefulness. The chainsaw, it helped tame the American landscape and fill its emergency rooms. Number 75 helped treat tuberculosis patients by allowing them to sleep outdoors. The electric blanket. Introduced in 1912, it's still providing pain relief and a good night's sleep to arthritis sufferers worldwide. But don't buy a used one. Older electric blankets are a leading cause of household fires. Number 74 literally changed the face of the presidency. The safety razor. Throughout human history, there's always been a way of removing hair from your face, from blades to using, using fine strings known as threading. So what was the dramatic revolution that changed the way our presidents look? It was American inventor King Gillette's patent of the safety razor in 1904. The invention was the first to use a disposable blade. It's placed in a brace that secured it and helped protect the face by exposing only a small amount of the blade's edge. Men could now safely shave themselves without having to rely on the expertise of a barber. During World War I, the Gillette Company provided the safety razor to servicemen who needed to be clean shaven in order to wear gas masks. When they came back from the war, they brought with them also these new habits, like this fact of being clean shaven. The safety razor institutionalized this concept of the morning shave and made it sort of part of the day. It's like brushing your teeth for most men. In fact, since the invention of the safety razor, every U.S. president has been clean shaven. In terms of gadgets that change history, the safety razor means that everyone is close, sh close shaven, kind of uh, too bad for the world. Men look better with beards. Number 73 put the typewriter out of business. The desktop printer. The only problem? The ink costs more than the gadget. Some command $22 per quarter ounce, making inkjet cartridges more expensive than Russian caviar. Number 72. The American Watch Company came up with this gadget in the mid-1850s. The stopwatch. That tick, tick, tick sound is even older than 60 minutes. The stopwatch is part of this progression we see of measuring time ever more precisely. The mechanism of a stopwatch is similar to a pocket watch, except that pressure on a spring is required to set the watch in motion. Stopwatches are, by their very nature, imperfect devices. The millisecond it takes you to smash that button with your finger, you've already lost perfect precision timing. Modern electronics in sporting events have actually removed the human factor from the stopwatch and actually made chronography this super precise science. When somebody wins, it's indisputable. In the 100-meter butterfly in the 2008 Summer Games, Michael Phelps and Milorad Chavich reached the finish at apparently the same moment, but the timing system told otherwise. I was able to win the 100 fly in Beijing by one one hundredth of a second. Um, you know, it's faster than the blink of an eye, the faster than, faster than a finger snap. It doesn't get any closer than that. You know, I'm extremely fortunate to be on the, the positive side of that race. A stopwatch makes racing a lot more exciting and a lot more fun. Number 71 made you run for the hills when your in-laws pulled it out. The Carousel Slide Projector. Introduced in 1961, it fixed the constant jamming and spilling slides that plagued other projectors and changed the way Americans shared their memories. It enjoyed a 43-year run until Kodak stopped making them in 2004. 
Number 70 first altered the American soundscape in the 70s. The Boombox. Its immense size and the loud sounds that came with it was the attraction. But not everybody was a fan. Since the 1980s, boomboxes have been banned on New York City subways. Number 69 does its job at 30,000 strokes per minute. The Electric Toothbrush. The first Broxident was released in 1954 by a Swiss inventor. It was originally designed to help disabled people brush their teeth. Half a century later, 31% of Americans own a power toothbrush. Number 68. The first version was cleaner and more efficient than its predecessor. The Coleman Lantern, introduced in 1901. You hear Coleman, you sort of think camping, but apparently this was, this was a tool for farmers so they could stay out and harvest their crops later. Coleman's built over 50 million of them to date. Number 67. This gadget helps bring far-off events into focus. Binoculars. The biggest advantage binoculars had over the telescope is the fact that they employ both eyes, creating better color, contrast, and depth perception. As binoculars became more powerful, image stability became a problem. Modern models use gyroscopic sensors to keep a steady image, but can cost thousands of dollars. Number 66. It's a critical tool for any job where it's important to measure twice and cut once. The tape measure. The spring-driven model was patented in 1829. The inventor also manufactured the flat metallic tape used to hold the shape of large ladies' skirts. After he got the idea to put graduated lines and numbers on the tape, the modern tape measure was born. Number 65. It's one of the great time-saving devices of all time. The zipper. First popularized by the fashion industry in 1937, it's been preventing embarrassing wardrobe malfunctions ever since. The zipper is a convenient way to close your pants, but with that many tiny metal teeth, you still want to take your time. Zippers work when two opposing rows of teeth are forced together by a wedge, and the zipper is locked when the opposing teeth are snapped together. Zippers took a great leap forward when they became air and water tight. They were just what NASA was looking for in the 1960s to seal up their astronaut spacesuits. Engineers had a lot of work before the zipper was ready to take on space. Besides being totally airtight, they had to be flexible enough to conform to the different curves of the spacesuit and strong enough to stand any rigorous movement. The zipper was the barrier between uh, that pressurized environment that gave them the air to breathe, the oxygen, the pressure, and the vacuum of space. And if this thing would have failed, it would have been a catastrophic failure. Number 64. This tiny gadget has only an inch and a half long barrel, which made it easy to conceal. The Derringer. The Derringer is the weapon as gadget, in other words, the very highly personal weapon. The cool thing about the Derringer is that for a long time it was the weapon of choice for women. It actually earned itself the nickname the Muff Pistol. Starting in 1852, Derringer made some 15,000 pistols. The percussion cap weapon typically fired a single 41 caliber lead ball more lead per length of barrel than most pistols made before it. It's deadly force put into the smallest possible package. With miniaturization comes a price, accuracy. I would say from 10 yards, a Derringer would not be my weapon of choice. If I were to have to use a Derringer, I would want to be right on top of my target. But at point blank range, it's a different story. Whenever you have deadly force, you have the potential to change history. And you can obviously see that in the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. April 14, 1865. John Wilkes Booth enters Ford's theater carrying a single-shot Philadelphia Derringer. From just inches away, Booth pulls the trigger. Even with its limitations, Booth's Derringer changed the course of history. Number 63 does double duty for factory workers and school kids alike. The lunchbox. When American agriculture gave way to factory work, workers didn't go home for lunch anymore, and the lunchbox was born. 
The modern version was introduced in 1950 with the iconic matching thermos. 120 million were sold between 1950 and 1970, the golden age of the lunchbox. Number 62 is the most significant culinary gadget since the steak knife. The charcoal grill. In 1952, two brothers turned a pair of marine buoys into the first Weber grill. With 50 million units moved, it's the best-selling grill in the U.S. Number 61. Where there's smoke, there may be fire. Enter the smoke detector. The smoke detector is one of those interesting objects that's annoying as heck until it saves your life. The number one problem is the beeping sound it makes when the little 9-volt battery goes bad and you got to put a new battery in. All joking aside, the smoke detector may be the most important gadget in your home. Over 3,200 people a year die in residential fires in the United States. And of those 3,200, probably 900 could be saved from working smoke alarms. Ionization smoke detectors spew out tiny radioactive particles that turn air molecules into ions, which whiz between two electrodes. As long as the ions are moving around, the detector thinks all's well. But if smoke particles get into the detector and clog up the chamber, the alarm sounds. This is a life-saving gadget. If there ever was one, this is it. Number 60 had its rock debut at the iconic Monterey Pop Festival in 1967. The Moog Synthesizer. It changed pop music and was featured on albums by everyone from the Beach Boys to Stevie Wonder. Number 59 sent the floppy disk packing. The CD-ROM. Introduced 25 years ago, it revolutionized computing. Everyone had access to libraries of data on a single disk. Number 58 made yachtsmen out of regular Joes. The outboard motor. First built in 1904, early one-cylinder models put out just three horsepower, but they kick-started a revolution on waterways worldwide. Number 57 tops off the outward appearance of millions of people every day. The hair dryer. Before it came along, drying long hair really sucked. People actually used vacuum cleaners to do the job. Number 56. Ampex first introduced this gadget in the 40s. It transformed the worlds of music, radio, and journalism forever. The tape recorder. What was really revolutionary about a tape recorder was that you could take a tape, record it, and then record over it. It was reusable media. When audio tape moves across the record head, oxide in the tape is electromagnetized. Its metallic particles are rearranged into new electronic pulses, which is the recorded sound. It was an innovation that changed the way history was recorded. During his term, President Richard Nixon used a Sony TC-800B to record almost 3,000 hours of sensitive Oval Office conversations. We've got, we have a cancer within the cloak for the presidency that's growing. But the most famous recording wasn't a recording at all. It was the infamous 18-plus minute erasure, thought to be an incriminating conversation between Nixon and John Haldeman about the Watergate break-in. We have here a re-recording or a copy of tape 342, the tape containing the 18-minute gap. In 2002, the National Archives asked forensic audio expert Paul Ginsberg to try and recover what had been erased. During that 18-minute time or gap, the uh, recording was over-recorded five different times. The over-recording also added a layer of electronic noise. It's often possible to isolate voices from background noise, but in this case, it proved impossible. It was a complete erasure. Nobody will ever know what that content was. Nearly 10 months after the gap was discovered, Nixon resigned the presidency. Number 55. This next gadget owes its heyday to the 70s fuel crisis and the 55 mile an hour speed limit that came with it. 
Citizens Band Radio. It changed the American lexicon by introducing us to trucker slang. Everything from bears in the air to 10-4, good buddy, became part of everyday lingo. Number 54 made recording your mark in history much less messy. The ballpoint pen. It used to be that something as simple as writing a letter used to be a big production with quill pens or fountain pens and handling liquid ink. The ballpoint pen changed the rules. Sure, they now come in every color of the rainbow and cheap packs of 10, but... In 1945, the first ballpoint pen, the Reynolds Rocket, went on sale for $10. Today, that's well over $100. Number 53 has been around for as long as the horseless carriage. The automotive jack. The genius is its compact size and simplicity. The average automotive scissor jack weighs just six pounds, but can easily lift one or two tons. An exceptionally fast NASCAR pit crew uses one to change four tires, plus add a tank of fuel in 11 seconds. Number 52 is revolutionizing the way we read. The Kindle. It holds over 3,000 books, seven times the number of books the average guy reads in a lifetime. Number 51 has its roots in the 19th century. The push mower. And why do American suburbs look green from a plane? Because we all have these front lawns that we could not maintain without some mechanical gadget that lets you keep the grass tidy. Each year, Americans spend $40 billion on seed, sod, and chemicals. And we use 580 million gallons of gas in our mowers. We're halfway through our countdown of the 101 gadgets that changed the world. We've seen how duct tape saved the lives of three astronauts on a moon mission, how the safety razor changed the face of the American presidency, and how a common blender helped stop polio in its tracks. But that's nothing compared to the way these next 50 gadgets have changed the world. Let's kick things up a notch as we unveil number 50. It took the genius of the reel-to-reel -reel recorder and reduced it to the perfect compact size, the audio cassette. It's a bygone format now, but it did much more than inspire our appetite for portable music. The revolutionary way we use the audio cassette was, uh, was as we were sullenly sitting in our rooms listening to the radio, when a song we'd like went on, we'd push record. Mixtapes were huge. Mixtapes were what you made for your best friend or the person you were dating, and it was like having your own soundtrack to your life. Cassettes contain two separate audio tracks. The first is played when the tape is moving in one direction, the second when the tape is flipped over and moving in the opposite direction. But how did this gadget change history? The cassette, I think, had a real role in politics in that it was a way to make portable speeches, ideas. Case in point, in October 1978, Iran's Ayatollah Khomeini reached his supporters with a series of recorded speeches made from exile in France. We taped him and uh, duplicated it and send it to Iran by passengers or by telephone. Supporters then mass duplicated the cassettes and used an underground network to distribute them throughout the country. I guess that some of them were duplicated more than millions. Four months after the cassettes hit the street, the Shah's nearly 40-year reign collapsed. I think that the emotions which were transferred by these speeches to the nation, it was very effective. Today, it's Sazagara who's in exile. He's split with the current regime. Like Khomeini, he's calling for regime change too. But he uses YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter instead of cassettes. Number 49 won't inspire regime change, but it will reshape anything made of wood. The circular saw. One prototype combined a sugarcane cutter with a blender engine. To get the job done, its blade spins at nearly 125 miles per hour, while its teeth make over 140,000 bites per minute. It can do almost 100 times the work of a handsaw, making it one of the most effective power tools on Earth. Number 48. When it debuted in 1989, the world changed. Not for adults, but for kids. The Nintendo Game Boy. 
It took an entire 1980s video arcade experience and placed it in the palm of your hand, helping video games grow to a $60 billion industry. Portable pocket gaming, we take it for granted today. It's in our iPhones, it's everywhere, but it all started with the Game Boy. Number 47 is a handyman's best friend, the Leatherman. Since it came out in 1983, it's been an amazing thing to have when you're in a bind. An airplane pilot actually used one to free his malfunctioning landing gear and prevent a crash. The Leatherman is the quintessential gadget. The Leatherman is that sort of MacGyverish tool. Even if the solution to the problem is not immediately apparent, just keep thumbing through the tools and one of them is going to apply. The largest is the Surge. Its 21 tools include two knives, pliers, two kinds of drivers, and most importantly, a bottle opener. Engineer Tim Leatherman dreamed up the idea for the multi-tool while on vacation in 1975. I was carrying a camper's knife, a Boy Scout type knife, and using that for everything from slicing bread for dinner, but uh, I often needed a pair of pliers. It took eight years of development before Leatherman unveiled his first tool. This is the original model, the Leatherman tool. It opens up into needle nose pliers, wire cutters, and the handles. It has the more traditional blades of a pocket knife. It's strong enough to cut this nail. And afterwards, the wire cutters still cut paper. It's more than just a cool gadget. It's an icon for entrepreneurs worldwide. Since its introduction, Leatherman has sold over 30 million tools. Tim Leatherman's a hero because he's that lone inventor, just an ordinary guy with a good idea that followed it all the way through to execution. And he was right. He did have a great idea. Like the Leatherman, number 46 can get you out of a jam, but it's only got one simple purpose. The fire extinguisher. Since it was first mass produced in the early 1800s, it saved tens of thousands of lives. Early models held an explosive charge to deliver the fire retardant when they were superheated. Modern models use compressed air and dry chemicals, taking the fear out of everyday kitchen fires and spontaneous human combustion. Number 45 transformed how we listen to music. The Walkman. The idea started when a Sony co-founder requested a small cassette player for his personal use. It became the way to turn up the music and tune out everything else. By 1995, Sony had sold over 150 million of them and paved the way for the iPod. Number 44. For 25 years, this was how the world transferred computer data. The floppy disk. But before the floppy disk, there was no easy way of giving your friend a file, no easy way of transferring data back and forth. The floppy disk sort of laid the groundwork for the share-heavy world we live in today. It held the data of 3,000 ancient punch cards and reigned supreme until it was deposed by the more stable, more sizable CD-ROM. Whittling down a mountain of gadgets to select the very best of the best required a hand-picked team of the globe's top tech experts and inventors. Popular Mechanics has been covering the growth of technology for over 100 years. So to put together this list, we reached out to some of our contributors and contacts and really pooled the thinking of some of the best minds in technology today. Number 43 took instant photos four decades before the first digital camera came out. Hey, cheese. The Polaroid camera, even though it seems really archaic right now, if you think about it, it was really ahead of its time in the sense that it fulfilled this need for instant gratification. Introduced in 1972, the SX70 was the classic Polaroid camera, tallying 800 million in sales by 1975. But by 2008, the format was dead, overtaken by the digital camera. Number 42. Introduced in 1998, it allows huge music collections to fit in the palm of your hand. The MP3 player. At the time, this notion that you could upload a thousand songs to a device that fit in your pocket was pretty revolutionary. 
and it really actually sold the MP3 as a format. The iPod was a game changer for consumers because it was just so easy. One of the iPod's most innovative features is its touch-sensitive click wheel. It uses a technology called capacitive sensing, which senses the electrical energy of the user's fingers to navigate the controls. The MP3 gave indie rock bands a whole new way to make and distribute music. The music industry was this massive, massive machine, but it only existed to connect people who make music with the people who want to listen to it. Now that music sort of exists in this cloud, it's just digital ones and zeros out there somewhere that you kind of like reach into and grab whenever you want. That whole machine has fallen apart. Downloading MP3s steamrolled music retailers. One in four U.S. record stores around in 2002 was gone by 2005. And by 2008, an online music store, Apple's iTunes, became the top music retailer in the U.S. In 2010, it sold its 10 billionth MP3. We found this new platform where we could basically make something, put it up, and, and there it was for our fans. We've left our major label, we do everything ourselves now, and it's, it's really freeing. Without number 41, most of us couldn't even count to 10 billion. Back in the day, it was called an abacus. Today, it's called the pocket calculator. Simple mathematic calculations. They used to take warehouse-sized supercomputers. The first real, true calculator weighed 2,000 pounds. Whoever called that a pocket calculator, I don't know what they were thinking. The original IBM transistor calculator also cost $80,000. Today's calculators are not only cheaper and more compact, they also have more processor speed than the computer that powered Apollo 11. Number 40 has become as important to the local coffee shop as cream and sugar, the Wi-Fi router. It untangled the internet and wet America's insatiable appetite to stay connected and informed 24 seven. But some hate paying for it. In 2008, the state of Maryland introduced a bill making it a crime to steal your neighbor's Wi-Fi. Number 39 was invented in 1889, primarily to dig rock and coal. The electric drill, and it's been saving trillions of man hours ever since. I've seen one example of, of a pre-electric drill where you take this thing and you slowly auger your way into the wood. It seems like an incredibly tiring way to do work. Hand drills remain useful in woodworking, but for large jobs, the electric drill rules. The hand grip on the electric drill actually based on the hand grip of the Colt 45 gun. Some high-tech gadgets changed the world in a matter of months, but number 38 took decades. High definition television. The first version showed up in Japan in 1979, but this is pre-digital, so it took so much bandwidth, a modern cable system could only deliver a few channels. It was digital that made HDTV practical. It took another 20 years before HD became must-see TV. Now, 65% of American homes have HDTVs. Time now for gadget number 37. The wristwatch. the wearable timepiece that ushered in our fast-paced modern world, full of people who no longer had time to search for their pocket watch. There's a time efficiency in a wristwatch that you didn't have in a pocket watch, in that you simply do that and you know exactly what time it is. The wristwatch is, I think, an interesting gadget because probably more than any other gadget, it shows the importance of design and of beauty. And it's so appropriate that it was made by Cartier. In 1904, jeweler Louis Cartier designed a wristwatch for an aviator who needed to check the time without releasing his controls. World War I, wristwatches became standard issue because of the need to synchronize attacks. A commander would count 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, mark. At the command mark, everyone would press in the stem on their wristwatch, and so the second hands would all start at that time. June 6, 1944, D-Day. Without the wristwatch, this battle plan would have been impossible. And they had to drop paratroopers at a certain time. 
They had to fire naval gunfire at a certain time. They had to make sure they stopped that firing before troops came out of the landing craft and hit the beaches. The D-Day invasion of World War II would not have been possible without all the leaders working on the same time. Number 36 didn't win any wars, but it changed the way America kept memories. Since 1932, it's been taking vacations and crashing parties. The 8mm movie camera. It put recording history into the hands of everyday Americans, capturing the horror of JFK's assassination in Dallas. Number 35 transformed global communications by allowing our thoughts to be recorded for posterity, sometimes whether we like it or not. The microphone. Without it, there'd be no telephones, radio, or television. The microphone first evolved as a component of telephones in the 1870s, and now anybody can use one in karaoke to become a star, at least in their own mind. Number 34 was invented in 1975 and weighed in at 8 pounds. The first digital camera. Today, the world's lightest is a Japanese model that weighs just over 12 grams. Though it still adds 10 pounds to your midsection when it takes your picture. And America loves taking pictures. Over 2.5 billion digital photos are added to Facebook every month. Number 33 took two decades to get to market. The microwave oven. So many inventions are the result of someone actually trying to build something else, and the microwave oven is a classic example of that. The microwave was actually an offshoot of radar research in World War II. Uh, one of the inventors actually discovered that a chocolate bar was melting in his pocket while he was doing some experimentation with radar frequencies. And initially they were called radar ranges for that very reason. Today, they're in 90% of U.S. homes. Before number 32 came along, the only way to talk to a computer was via a keyboard. The computer mouse. Steve Jobs was inspired to create a single button version for the Mac after seeing a prototype at a Xerox research facility in the late 70s. The typical American worker clicks one over 200,000 times a year. Gadget number 31 started appearing in handheld calculators in 1968. The light emitting diode, or LED. Today, they light up everything, from the darkest corners of the world to the Great White Way. Unlike ordinary light bulbs, LEDs have no filament. They're semiconductor diodes that radiate light when current passes through them. Their chemical makeup determines their color. One company is responsible for about 70% of all the illuminated signage in Times Square. This is its latest design. In a display like Aeropostale over there, you've got well in excess of 2 million individual red, green, and blue LEDs. LEDs allow designers to create tight curves and reach amazing heights. But perhaps their most important advantage, they're energy efficient. Light bulbs take up enormous amounts of power. They add the global warming, they add the greenhouse gas emissions. LED bulbs are just much more efficient. I mean, they're gonna help us save the world. Number 30 changed the way a whole generation listened to music. The compact disc player. Boasting higher fidelity and the ability to skip tracks instantly, the CD revolution boosted global music sales by hundreds of billions of dollars in just 10 years. The first CD released in the US? Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA. Number 29. Introduced in 1983, it was so big it rested on your shoulder. The camcorder. Now it fits in your palm, but it still has the power to record events and sometimes incite them. The camcorder, of course, didn't do anything that new. Got pictures, it, it, could, uh, it could do sound. We could already do that with the 8mm and the Super 8 uh, movie camera. The big difference was that you could do it so promiscuously. Before the camcorder, America relied on journalists with news cameras to capture street violence. All that changes on March 3rd, 1991. 
Rodney King is horrifically beaten by Los Angeles police officers after a high-speed chase. A bystander records the incident with a Sony Handycam and changes history. We'd heard about all this kind of stuff. Police brutality, all those kinds of things. Not like we didn't know about it. But here it was, on videotape. Today, global injustices are captured with cell phone video cameras and uploaded almost instantly for the world to see. And we do live in an age where it's almost like the walls have ears and the, the sidewalks have eyeballs. Everything is seen. And so nothing completely happens without someone knowing about it. Gadget number 28 really rocks. The electric guitar. The cultural revolution that swept the globe in the 60s owes a huge debt to Les Paul, who pioneered the modern solid body version in the early 50s. His original attempt, the log, was merely a 4x4 block of wood mounted in the middle of a semi-hollow guitar. But by 1953, the Les Paul standard became THE standard in electric guitars. Number 27. Even the President of the United States can't live without it. The Blackberry. Launched in 1999, it was quickly hailed as a lifesaver and nicknamed the Crackberry. The lines we had, this is work, and this is not work, are gone. And the BlackBerry is the gadget that has powered that change. So why are we so addicted to our CrackBerries? It became something, the moment you were slightly bored, you would pull out your BlackBerry. It sort of hit those reward centers in your brain. Number 26 has done more than change the world. It practically built it. The Crescent Wrench. With one little tool, you could work on all kinds of equipment. My dad gave me this one. This is uh, obviously an enormous one. It belonged to his father, who actually used this working on the Panama Canal. When Lindbergh flew the Spirit of St. Louis across the Atlantic in 1927, he carried just two tools, a pair of pliers and a crescent wrench. Number 25 brought great sounding recorded music into the home for the first time the hi-fi. But when introduced in the 50s, they were pricey. A Marantz 10B tuner retailed for $600, one quarter the cost of a 1964 Ford Mustang. Number 24 was once considered a tailor's worst nightmare. The sewing machine. The sewing machine is one of these gadgets that multiplies the effect of human labor. The, the number I was told is that pre-sewing machine would be 14 hours for a tailor to make a shirt. Now it's an hour. In the mid-1800s, six inventors, tired of suing each other for patent infringement, pooled their patents to create a super company named aptly enough, the Sewing Machine Combination. Number 23. In the late 80s, smaller microprocessors allowed for the creation of the laptop. It liberated us from the office, allowing us to access critical information in the field. The laptop is a good example of the way the technologies that become really important to us then become more portable. Have laptop will travel. You know, I'm a reporter, I can't think of going someplace without it. With the advent of wireless networks in the late 90s, laptops could access critical information on the go. It was a global game changer in war and peace. November 21, 1980. A massive fire breaks out in the Las Vegas MGM Grand. Nine fire companies respond, but communications problems complicate the rescue. 84 people die in the worst disaster in Las Vegas history. Today, nearly every first response vehicle in Las Vegas is equipped with a laptop. Engine 1 dispatch, you have an alpha response for unconsciousness. 47 West Orange Avenue for Engine 1. We originally started using laptops uh, about a decade ago, and it was originally to collect patient care reports in the field. Uh, we started using them in the front of the units to put ourselves in route, or show ourselves on scene, had a map, show where the fire trucks were. January 25, 2008. Fire erupts in the Monte Carlo Casino. Laptops in all the rescue vehicles help coordinate the response. There were no injuries. Number 22 helped turn adult entertainment into a $20 billion industry. 
the VCR. When the VCR was first invented, Hollywood executives thought it was going to kill their business. Boy, were they wrong. The VHS actually increased the shelf life of movies and spawned the video rental business. But by 2001, the VCR was overtaken by the DVD player. And in 2006, Walmart stopped selling VHS tapes. A final nail in the coffin. Number 21 lets hundreds of millions of people screen their calls. The answering machine. The answering machine was almost invented by Thomas Edison in 1897. Mere months after the telephone was invented, Edison attempted to create a machine to answer and record calls. Sadly, it didn't work, but he found another use for it and called it the phonograph. We've hit a milestone, the top 20 of the 101 gadgets that changed the world. But how has this next level transformed the stakes? Let's go back to the editors of Popular Mechanics. Now we're really getting into the big game-changing technologies. These are the real world changers, the ones that you can't imagine living without. These are the technologies that have really transformed the modern lifestyle, in fact, made our modern lifestyle possible. Let's get back to the countdown. Number 20. Studies suggest you can lose two pounds a year by removing the batteries from it. The remote control. The TV company Zenith introduced the first remote control, and they probably had an idea about its long-term impact on humanity because they named it Lazy Bones. Modern remotes use infrared technology. Early models used no batteries and signaled the TV by striking aluminum rods in the remote, emitting high-frequency sound to change the channels up or down. Sure, you couldn't really channel surf, but you also never had to change batteries. When gadget number 19 hit the shelves in 1900, it had a price tag of a dollar. The Kodak Brownie. This camera simplified photography and sold over a quarter million units in its first year. Number 18. This labor saver is really popular. The vacuum cleaner. And not just with the millions of people who use it, Turns out there are at least nine people who claim to have invented it. It's hard to believe, but some of the earliest vacuum cleaners were humongous devices that had to be pulled by horses and powered by gasoline. And they would bring a hose into the house to vacuum up the debris. Number 17 helps men get out of asking for directions. The GPS. Introduced to consumers in the late 90s, it helps us get where we're going and sometimes saves lives. Make a U-turn. Take the second exit. Destination ahead. Think of the driving around and hunting that it eliminates from our lives. The pollution, the fuel, the choking the highways. I think it's fantastic. A GPS receiver locates four or more of 27 Earth-orbiting satellites and calculates the distance to each. Using a formula called trilateration, the GPS deduces its location on Earth. It works in any weather conditions, anywhere in the world, 24 hours a day. But can it change history? GPS is a great example of certain technologies that begin in the military space and then they migrate to consumers. GPS was critical in the rescue of Captain Scott O'Grady, an Air Force pilot shot down in Bosnia in 1995. He had to land navigate and just constantly stay ahead of the enemy forces. The GPS system helped him quickly and accurately plot his positions and move out in a timely manner. After six days on the run, a rescue team plucked O'Grady from behind enemy lines and brought him to safety. Number 16. Early radios were big and bulky. When the transistor was introduced in 1947, it enabled the invention of a popular new gadget, the transistor radio. It made music portable and ushered in the age of rock. It's not a coincidence that the transistor radio came onto the scene and became popular right around the time that rock and roll was also kind of taking the country by storm. Antique console radios used vacuum tubes to switch and amplify electricity. The silicon transistor was 50 times smaller, much more durable, 
and lasted a whole lot longer. For generations of kids, from the 30s through the 1950s, listening to the radio was akin to torture. You were forced to listen to what your parents wanted you to listen to. And most parents back then didn't like rock and roll. They thought it was uh, some sort of a corrosive force that would destroy their kids. For McGuinn, freedom came when he got the first transistor radio for his 13th birthday, a Regency TR1G. I only had the radio for a short time before I heard Elvis. It was a game changer for me. His 14th birthday present, a guitar. A decade later, he and the Birds transformed Bob Dylan's folk classic, Mr. Tambourine Man, into rock and roll. It's hard to say whether or not I would have done what I do now if it hadn't been for the transistor radio. I really loved it. It was my favorite gadget. I think it was why rock and roll got so big. Number 15 may not be the sexiest gadget, but it's revolutionized modern life. The modem. Early versions communicated at a snail's pace of 110 bits per second. Today, U.S. broadband speeds average 3.9 megabits per second, roughly 35,000 times faster. Number 14. Three centuries ago, it became the biggest thing since the printing press. The typewriter. In 1867, the first commercially successful model became available and introduced the QWERTY keyboard recognized today. Number 13 gave the world light and heat. The safety match. The modern safety match wasn't invented until 1910. Before that, a book of matches held enough white phosphorus to kill a person. Number 12. There are over 800 million of them in use today. The bicycle. They've come a long way from an early version built in the 1870s, the penny farthing. The key innovations? Both wheels were now the same size and power was moved to the back wheel driven by a chain making it safer and easier to steer. This transforms the bicycle into a primary form of transportation. Fuel-free, zero-cost, rapid, independent transportation. That's enormous. The modern bike may be much safer than its ancestor, but that just allows riders to take bigger, more spectacular risks. I think the, the bicycle is a cool gadget because it's it, you know it's a simple machine. It's a uh, you know cranks and sprocket and chain and and wheels and bearings. It's taking all these simple machines and put them into one device here. So what about giving a penny farthing a shot? Let's see what we got going on. Oh my God! Ah! <laughs> Oh, almost nose wheelie. Oh, pro status. <laughs> Perfect. I'd, uh, I'd definitely prefer my bike over this one. There's no doubt about it. Unlike the bicycle, many of the gadgets on our list would be useless without number 11, the dry cell battery. In 1896, Cleveland's National Carbon Company introduced the first mass-produced dry cell battery called the Columbia which allowed for the creation of handheld battery-powered devices. Today, Americans purchase nearly 3 billion batteries every year to power our gadgets. We've hit a milestone. The top 10 of the 101 gadgets that changed the world. Chosen by our panel of tech gurus and experts, including the team at Popular Mechanics, these gadgets are so earth-shattering that we simply can't imagine life without them. We've seen how the iPod launched a music revolution, how the tiny Derringer changed presidential history, and we've seen how the simple wristwatch helped defeat the Nazis. Now we unveil the very best of the best, the top 10 gadgets of all time. Gadget number 10. It was first developed in Britain in the early 1800s. The light bulb. But the original only lasted for a few minutes at a time. For a practical bulb, we had to wait until 1879 and Thomas Edison, whose bright idea changed the world forever. 
to succeed where others had failed, Edison combined an improved vacuum with lower current to keep the filament from burning out. The result was the most significant invention since man harnessed fire. The light bulb is the ultimate revolt against the gods, to put it that way. It has totally changed what the human race is and what it does. So all of a sudden, the society as a whole was no longer changed to the sunrise and the sunset. In the early 1900s, factories added night shifts. And in the space of just a decade, the value of goods produced nearly tripled. Simply put, Edison's electric light changed the way the world looks, up close and even from outer space. It takes a heck of a gadget to best the Edison light bulb on our countdown. Before number nine was perfected, your wake-up call was a rooster's crow. The alarm clock. Love it or hate it, this gadget keeps the world on time. America really became a huge industrial powerhouse. We needed to get workers into the factory on time. The alarm clock really came in at the right time to be a, a immensely important gadget for the growth of the U.S. industry. But like any new technology, it had its downside. The uh, unfortunate fact of the matter is, is that this wonderful gadget has in fact been turned into uh, a tool of destruction in use in improvised explosive devices. Hahn investigated scores of bombings during his 26-year career, many of which used a simple clock to trigger the explosion. This is it. This is the gadget turned into an instrument of death. One notorious and terrifying example was Atlanta's Olympic Park bombing in 1996. What it was, was the absolute worst nightmare of every bomb technician, which is an explosive device designed for anti-personnel purposes. This actually had nails in it deck as anti-personnel shrapnel. It was electrically fused using an uh, alarm clock. The FBI eventually tied bomber Eric Rudolph to this explosion by comparing the bomb's components with one of Rudolph's previous bombs. Both were triggered by a simple alarm clock. So many of our gadgets improve on old ones, but the truly great ones blaze new paths. Number eight gave rise to a $130 billion industry. The phonograph. Some of the early versions of the phonograph, you know, for example, uh, Edison's wax cylinder system, people weren't quite sure what it was going to be used for. A lot of people thought it would be used for recording the voice, for books. But before long, wax-coated cylinders were pushed aside for a key innovation. In 1901, the Victor Talking Machine Company introduced a phonograph that played round discs. Its needle was attached to a diaphragm and a sound horn. As the record turned, the tiny grooves caused the needle to vibrate back and forth. These vibrations were amplified by the diaphragm and broadcast out of the horn. As the phonograph got better, it, the killer app for the phonograph became music. Even though the phonograph was pushed aside by cassettes in 1983, vinyl sales have mounted a strong comeback. 2.8 million units in 2010, the highest figure in nearly 20 years. Number seven, born after 1985? Chances are you've only seen this gadget used in old movies and TV shows, the rotary phone. The key breakthrough with the telephone was going to a, a relatively automated system. You dialed in the number of the person you wanted to call. Hello, Grandma. When you dialed a number, say five, the rotary phone opened then closed five electrical contacts located under the dialer. Those pulses were then sent to the phone company to be processed. On July 20th, 1969, President Nixon made one of the most famous phone calls in history. President Nixon called the moon. It was just an amazing accomplishment of a gadget. Hello, Neil and Buzz. I'm talking to you by telephone from the Oval Room at the White House. Right. Buzz Aldrin had just become the second man to set foot on the moon. When the leader of the country chooses to make a telephone call from his Oval Office, it was symbolic for the nation and it was symbolic for the world. 
Number 6 earned its way into the Immortal Gadget Top 10 by helping man battle his harsh environment in the coolest way possible. The Portable Air Conditioner Early models were just a fan over a bucket of ice. The Portable Window Air Conditioner was patented in 1931 and grew in popularity throughout the 40s and 50s. By 1953, more than one million units were sold a year. The air conditioner is the ultimate symbol of comfort and convenience. But that comfort comes at a cost. The air conditioner is a power-hungry beast, and we've been forced to rewire the American home. Air conditioning is often credited for the expansion of the Sun Belt, and since 1940, eight of the ten fastest-growing states are located in the hottest sections of the Southeast and Southwest. This is 101 Gadgets That Changed the World, chosen by a select group of the top technology gurus and experts from around the country, and the editors of Popular Mechanics. We're about to unveil the top five most significant gadgets of all time. People of Earth, prepare yourselves for gadget greatness. Number five. It's hard to name a gadget that's changed our modern world more than personal computers. Early models offered a feeble 64K of RAM. Today, they're 2,000 times more powerful. But how did they change history? The personal computer let, of course, the individual have access to the same power and efficiency and creativity as the big boys. The introduction of the microprocessor, a single chip with the circuitry that formerly occupied large mainframes, led to the explosion of personal computers in the late 1970s. At first, it seemed kind of just like a souped-up typewriter, but it really was much more than that because you can program a computer. Increasingly simple operating systems gained the home computer more fans. But it was the World Wide Web that blazed a new path to how we live our lives and get our information. Used to be if you wanted to see the Great Wall of China, you had to go to China. Used to be if you wanted to know a stock symbol, you had to call up a broker. The personal computer is sort of a window into the entire world. Pictures, video, music, slideshows, anything you can possibly imagine is seconds away thanks to the personal computer. More access to instant information changes the way Americans look at their finances, transforming everyday Americans into day traders. In the post-computer age, nearly 50% of U.S. households own stocks and bonds. The personal computer allowed someone to actually be tapping into the stock market remotely uh, from home and being able to make the same type of decisions that somebody who had previously had to be on the trading floor was doing. Art Cashin has been a member of the NYSE for 47 years. The guy in Ohio is no worse off than the guy standing on Wall Street. They've all had the chance to get the news and react to it. Number four might not be as technically impressive as the computer, but it's had an even bigger impact on mankind. The hypodermic syringe. At least 10% of us admit to fearing it, but nobody can argue that this gadget that sparks terror is an everyday lifesaver. This won't hurt a bit. Before things like the hypodermic needle, battlefield medicine and medicine in general were, were, you know, essentially a horror show. If you look back at the Civil War, so many of those fatalities, those poor guys, were just bled out. But it took modern manufacturing to make hollow, thin needles. That just wasn't possible before. Good right hand, good right hand. Good work, good work. For former heavyweight boxing champ Buster Douglas, the hypodermic needle is a life-saving gadget. A year after beating Mike Tyson in the greatest upset in boxing history, Douglas nearly died after going into a diabetic coma. I was just living, just recklessly, going from day to day, not really caring about myself. And that was a wake-up call. His doctors prescribed insulin, which he now injects twice a day. The needle. It's a lifesaver. It's a great gadget. How important is our number three gadget? You wouldn't be watching this countdown without it. From the moment it arrived in our living rooms after World War II, it was here to stay. Television. It's entertained us, informed us, and often changed history. TV really is this almost super gadget that brings picture and sound and entertainment and news and all of these kinds of things into the home. 
The idea of a technology which allows you to reach hundreds of millions of people that they will sit there obediently and listen to you for long periods of time, the idea of prime time, are completely new ideas in human history. Television first gave us a much wider image of what was going on around the world. We saw that in things like coverage of the Vietnam War. Dan Rather cut his teeth reporting on combat from the jungles of Vietnam. The Vietnam War was the first television war because while there was no live coverage from the battles, there were vivid pictures. You didn't have to imagine it anymore. You'd seen it. And it brought the protests against the war live right into living rooms all over. One thing to read about it, another thing to see it right in your living room. Television played a very important part in changing public opinion about the war. There is school of thought that Walter Cronkite's commentary led public opinion. For it seems now more certain than ever that the bloody experience of Vietnam is to end in a stalemate. It changed the nature of war coverage forever, but it also changed society and I would argue changed the world in a small degree. Number two. Our experts argued television only traveled a path blazed by this gadget. Radio. It was the first modern mass medium with the power to influence millions of people. Radio has stayed relevant and refuses to fade into history. Radio is an astonishing, powerful gadget. For the very first time, you could get a report of, a, of something happening on the other side of the planet. That, that for the first time, the planet was a complete circle. Radio introduces this huge culture that never stops, that's available at the flip of a switch. That changed the nature of the American home in really significant and profound ways. But radio didn't start out as entertainment. Shortwave radio technology was first used for ship-to-shore communications and by the military in World War I. Their main use at the time was for long-distance communications. And one of the main functions there uh, was to communicate with espionage agents to deliver them instructions remotely and securely. Speaking to the American people. During the Depression, President Franklin Roosevelt used a series of radio broadcasts called Fireside Chats to reassure the nation. They were a genius political move because they allowed the president to take advantage of a technology and make it seem as if he had a personal connection to all the citizens in the country. I mean, the real story here is, I think, the Nazi regime. He was able to use the radio to convince an entire nation to rise up and try to conquer the entire world. You want to talk about impact on history? You got it. Despite the advent of television and the internet, radio has held its influence. More than 236 million people still listen every week. The reason that radio is still relevant is that the car still retains such an importance. And if you look at the audiences for, for radio shows, they're actually quite huge. They're bigger than television. Love them or hate them, nobody has a wider reach than radio juggernauts Rush Limbaugh and Howard Stern. Combined, they're heard by nearly 25 million people each week. And like Roosevelt, they use radio to influence their audiences and sway opinion. We've given you 100 gadgets that changed the world. So, what is the number one? Here's a hint. It packs in at least 15 other gadgets from our list, including the flashlight, the stopwatch, the MP3 player, the wristwatch, the camcorder, the answering machine, GPS, and television. Over 95 million of them will be sold in 2011 alone, and billions are in circulation worldwide. That's right, our choice for the number one gadget that changed the world is the smartphone. The genius of smartphones is how they incorporate the cell phone, the personal organizer, and the computer and bundle them together in one small handheld device. There in that little tiny device that you have in your pocket is an entire office worth of communications technology, libraries worth of information, atlases worth of maps. The smartphone, it's even spawned a revolution, the app revolution. 
The mobile phone will change history like no other technology before it. First downloaded in July 2008, mobile phone apps are set to hit $25 billion in sales by 2015 in the U.S. That's the value of Hollywood's box office and video game sales combined. The mobile phone is the ultimate gadget. Once you've adapted to it, removing it would totally alter your life. Each of these gadgets has had an incredible impact. Together, they framed our modern way of life. Some started as playthings, but they've actually changed the world we live in. Take away light bulbs or hypodermic needles or radios or microwaves, even matches from the world, and what are we left with? Darkness, sickness, silence, hunger, having to rub two sticks together to make fire? It's gadgets that let us out of the dark ages and into the light. Next time your life gets easier, thank a gadget.